Hello, and um, I haven't posted any Terraria, I know, well, I don't think anybody really cares, but I'm actually going to post right now, or record, my Fallout new Fallout 4 ideas, things that could have been implemented f also in Fallout 3 and New Vegas, things that they could have added to make the, the Fallout world, you know, how dangerous it is and how much you have to survive into the game how much they could make you feel like okay I have to do this if I want to live you know without having to save every time I go through a door so one thing that uh... that they could have implemented was sprinting needed for getting around faster fleeing or rushing your enemy if you're melee or a close gunner sprinting was a nice addition to Skyrim and will be a fa B2 Fallout as well in both Fallout 3 and Fallout New Vegas, if you didn't have your desired location able to be fast travel to, you would either just procrastinate or pick the closest location and slowly walk slash jog to the desired spot. The regular pace your protagonist would go is slow and can make the game feel boring. Even with random encounters being implemented, the, follow the Fallout world can still have a certain emptiness that would make you not want to walk such a distance. <laughs> Number two. Take away, take away weapon and armor conditioning, or nerf the rate of weakening. Um, on a, a bleh. weapons shouldn't break at such a fast rate from firing them. Armor may break after getting shot up, and should make you more vulnerable to gunfire explosions. Like it makes sense that you know armor would deter, but guns, even though they're old, rusty, and stuff, they're still guns made out of metal and wood. They should be sturdy and shouldn't like shouldn't break down at such a fast rate. Maybe they could make it similar to Skyrim where the weapons don't break, but they could keep armor breaking because of, you know, gun wounds. And it seems like, like if you were to get shot up, that the armor would, you know, give off. Like, if you were to go into third-person mode, you could clearly see the armor has taken some damage or some, you know, it's got some bullet wounds or blood on it and so forth. Not just, like, if you were to get hit in Fallout, you'd see just, like, drops of blood in your eyes somehow and they'd slowly disappear. Alright, number three, weapon variety. Like, you know, it completely makes sense and they can do it if they feel like it. Just, you know, there wasn't much of a gun variety for assault rifles or SMGs in the Fallout Wastelands. Fallout New Vegas did add more guns, but more guns should not be out of the question. The light machine gun from Fallout New Vegas and the regular assault rifle or the Chinese assault rifles from Fallout 3 were my favorite to use, as well as the 12.7 SMG from Fallout New Vegas. Pistols as well. The Ugh. Pistols as well that could be fully automatic or burst fire. Burst fire weapons can all f can fall into a large variety as well, while only dealing burst fire. They they deal <laughs> high damage but with a low magazine. Maybe low damage, fast reloads, and fast fire rate. Fire rate, burst fire, damage output, magazine size, accuracy, or even that special effect that the gun deals when it shoots. <coughs> Giving off a gun variety can make the can make the player feel like, okay, this is my favorite gun, I'm going to keep it around for a while. And oh, hey, look, there's this gun, and that gun, and this gun, and that gun. Not like, oh, hey, a 9-point millimeter SMG. Oh, hey, there's another. Oh, there's another. Oh, hey, wow, that's pretty rare, 10 millimeter. Kind of like that feeling. Oh, hey, that pistol, or oh, hey, that person might have had that gun. I, you know, I've been actually looking for one of those. Like, guns could have certain rarities to them and better damage, or the common gun to the more special gun that's pretty hard to come by. Um... Number four on my list is armor variety. <laughs> Excuse me. Armor, ar armor should have a larger variety that can be used for stealth combat and so forth. For example, hooded robes for improved stealth and increasing speed or sneak attack damage. Similar to the ranger combat armor but with a hood that is based on light armor and stealth attributes. Or you could have bulky slash heavy set armor heavy set looking armor that improves heavy weapon damage and has high endurance but makes you slower than usual similar to like enclave or or uh, brotherhood of steel armor let's see where was i maybe even head apparel like gas masks hoods hats helmets glasses rebreathers goggles or sunglasses they did a pretty good job on the hat subject just you know maybe a little bit more all right now there could be like battle tactics on on number 5 of my list while an enemy has a bat and you have a gun, you can use your gun to help win a battle. A fiend would come at you with a bat or a knife while clearly not car caring if you have a gun. Maybe if you point it at them, it could unlock or start a special dialogue menu to make them beg for the life, or maybe if high enough speech making them offer things in exchange for the life. If you let them go, you gain good karma, or you could just kill them, lose karma, and loot their body as normal. Or maybe you just don't lose, you know, karma because, you know, you killed them. 
Now, it seems like you might lose karma since they begged for their life and, you know, want to go free. So, I suppose, you know, it could be a bit of a morale thing. It's kind of the people's choice. Again, this is an idea. Taking cover. The player or the NPC should be able to take a form of cover enough for them to be able to reload or heal in the middle of combat. Usually while you were to, to actually hide from enemies, they would walk up to you with their gun sights up and fire as soon as you sprang up. Or while you took cover, your followers would do all the work while you just sat there eating 20 fancy lad snack cakes and washing them down with 30 new cook or or sunset sarsaparillas. God, I need to work on my reading. Hostages. The player should be able to force an NPC on the ground and take them into a hostage situation using, that, uh, using them as a living meat shield or to make a negotiation with an enemy NPC. Or maybe that's just too complicated. It's better, than, better to just shoot them in the face. Okay, next page. <laughs> Excuse me. Customizing guns. Of course, modding a gun at Fallout in Vegas was a new idea and that was useful for stealth or how much lead you could pump into someone. But what if you could customize your own gun? Now, it might seem like a stretch, but what I'm saying is having a gun with a custom name and maybe customizing the color of and the name of that gun being engraved on the side for you to see. Maybe other special guns you find while adventuring on the wastelands could have those features. So like, you know, like, oh, like, you know, like, uh, like one of those, like a special weapon they find, like Annabelle or, you know, like, a, like, you could just like get the gun and have it specially engraved. It may even cost you money or you could do it yourself if you got the perk or if you got the perk to be able to do that in the first place at all. Okay, next one is armed robbery. Armed robbery. Every now and then you may have a random encounter of a prospector or some other random explorer of the waste. You can speak with them up front that you want whatever valuables they, 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 oh my god, they have, and threaten them with high speech or barter skill, or you can welcome them with a gun pointed at them and have them begging for their life. The NPC's retort. After all these actions you can take when speaking with an NPC, why would they just always comply with your demands? Of course they wouldn't. Let's say the player was to attempt to threaten or negotiate with the fiends. Fiends are twisted chemetics and <coughs> excuse me. Tw fiends are twisted chemetics and will most likely fail to reason with the player and will either attack or flee instead of obeying their requests. With this idea put in place, the player will learn to identify if he or she will have any luck convincing the NPC to listen and to notice how the P NPC responds to your choice of words and how what the player says may create a friendship or make a new enemy. Similar to uh, in the Lonesome Roan DLC, you could actually convince Ulysses not to kill you, but instead of work with you and, you know, you know spoiler alert, but uh, to work with you, defuse the bomb, you know, save, uh, decide on if you want to blow up the factions or leave them, and end up, you know, having the having the having the courier seem like a better person for his or her actions. All right, let's see, where was I? Maybe during a random encounter, if you were to be ambushed by a group of bandits, slaughter five, six of them. The last survivor may beg for his life, feeling that he or she has no chance of survival, given the fact that you are the protagonist. Execute the NPC, execute the NPC, demand for valuables, or let the NPC go, because not everybody's in the waste is cold-blooded. Now this one seems very important to me. Number nine, reputation. Reputation can influence many things. In Fallout New Vegas, Fallout New Vegas, reputation fell under karma and how factions interacted with you whether you were wearing their faction armor or not if the legion labeled you as vilified the first thing they if they were to spawn was to become hostile and proceed to shoot you in the face crush you with sledgehammers sucker punch you with their ballistic fix, fists or all of the above instead if the player was to be ambushed or attacked by a group after the battle commences and you slaughter most of them the rest may flee if you let your attackers flee, your reputation may increase in how dangerous you may be. If you let none survive, your reputation may stay unchanged. That's nobody's there to talk about it. There may be other ways of improving your reputation in a fight. Completing missions or saving a junkie from a fiend can change the player's reputation. Reputation can open up potential side missions or improve chance of receiving assistance during a mission. If the player's reputation is high enough, a potential ambush may recognize the player and realize impending doom of trying to kill or mug the player and end up fleeing from combat. There may be chances of a stronger or more dangerous NPC confronting the flip <laughs> confronting the player in attempts to challenge you or to kill you and improve the NPC's reputation. You know, in a 
you know, thing where they're not going to leave you without a fight. A higher reputation may result in most NPC, NPC realizing that the player is a f is a force to be reckoned with. All right, number ten. This one, it seems like like it could be a thing, but it seems like also the world will have to be larger and more expansive and more, you know, uh, constant. Like there's always something going on. Number ten, get a job. You know, similar to like Fallout, how you get a job from camp caravan, I think where they just send you on things, but those are just practically missions. Instead, while I played Fallout New Vegas, I would technically receive a job from places like the Mojave Outpost, offering me a job to eliminate ants in return to receive payment for completing your task. Those are just one-time quests that you cannot repeat. So my thought is that you can receive a job. For example, to escort a caravan as a guard, go kill a target, go out look for a requested item, or deliver a package, her, her, carrier. Completing a job can also increase your reputation and unlock. Hold up, hold up, and my butterfingers. Oh my god! Unlock better paying, more dangerous jobs, and may and maybe you can meet potential followers. Receiving a job would give the player who is short on caps a chance to make some quick money. During a job, random encounters may increase. For example, escorting a caravan, you were to be ambushed by an enemy business. Or if the player was to kill someone, have a rival NPC try and kill him before you. The player may kill the rival if he is success successful and still receive the payment, and the player can loot the rival's body. So let's say you kill the let's say you kill the target, the target, the rival instead will try to kill you. But let's say the rival kills your target and gets away. You're not getting paid, but instead, well, maybe you could still get paid if you you know speechcraft or. Uh, or perks that would like threaten them or you know seductive or, uh, but let's say the rival were to kill kill your target but then you kill the rival you could you could get both like you know two reds with one stone get rid of one potential you know nuisance and it still practically counts as your uh, target since you know the rival's not there to prove anything you go back you get your money and then you get another job and a better job and so forth <coughs> sorry alright number eleven NPC reactions and comments. As a Fallout fan, I wouldn't mind if an NPC would have more of a role than take this or you like the sight of your own blood. Maybe the NPC follower could warn the player other than saying their battle cry and shooting. The follower could warn the NPC of how many threats there are, what types of weapons they are using, and how much of a threat they, they may be whether or for the reason to want to take cover. Whether they are a reason for the player to want to take cover before battle. When you die, maybe the NPCs whether follower or enemy, make a comment upon your death. Abandoned or fiend, a fiend or fiend, saying dibs on the insert item here. Or a ghoul killing you, or a ghoul killing you proceeds to eat your dead body, or attack another, th th another, any other threats. Getting on with its life in the wastelands, giving off a sort of, I've killed you, now I'm gonna eat you, or okay, on to my next target, I'll get back to you and eat you. All right, number twelve. Better watch out. Usually when I get into a fight, the most I could tell if the enemy had a pistol, assault rifle, slash SMG, or a sniper. Maybe later, after a chunk of my health was to disappear, I would realize that the enemy had an anti-material rifle. But other than that, usually I wouldn't care what they had in their hand. I could, usually, I could literally stand in place and shoot them back instead of taking cover. That might want to change. If the player could realize there is a very dangerous gun being pointed their way, the player may want to rethink their strategy. Better watch. Oh, I just read that one. Well, 12 was better watch out. 13. Be afraid. Mostly in the Fallout world, my biggest fear was to fight Death Claws. In Fall New Vegas, was basically one location, Quarry Junction. That that I was to look out for. Besides the Lonesome Road DLC, you know which part if you played it. In Fallout 3, doing going down into a train station and sewers and countering ghouls gave a creepy environment to the game and was successful with me. I uh, didn't actually beat Fallout 3 until I beat Fallout New Vegas and gained the courage to actually beat Fallout New Fallout, Fallout 3. To which I didn't have enough money to get the DLC to let me keep playing after I beat the game, so I was pretty mad. But uh, more common than okay, so it was successful with me. But maybe there should be more than just the common goal to watch out for under the streets. Adding more enemies that include a challenge and offer good loot if you bring that enemy down. Some players may even choose to avoid such a tough enemy. So it seems like, like, you know, since you are one tough customer, there could be other tough customers out in the waste that also look like they've survived just as much as you have. 
you know, the higher level you are, similar to Skyrim, the higher level the enemies will be down there, or even up, or maybe even, like, uh, similar things like that. Like, just, just more like, okay, I have to do this. Like, it's my choice if I want to get to that, like, like, let's say there's a job and, you know, the, the target has a bodyguard, or the targets, or the rival may be that one tough customer that you have to get rid of. Alright, number 14. Boom. Headshot. When I played Fallout 4 while sneaking, Fallout 4 while sneaking, uh, when I played Fallout while sneaking, I would usually go into vats for a more likelihood of scoring a headshot. If I was successful at blowing my enemy's head off, their head would either explode, they w would either explode, they would just suddenly fall down, make a uh, sound, or my gun would shoot out a scythe and decapitate my enemy somehow. It may be a little unrealistic, but my enemy was dead. But if it, if your gun wasn't strong enough, a clear bullet to the head still wouldn't do as much damage, even though the bullet to the head would normally cause some damage. A headshot should deal some damage. Vats or not, whether the player has good aim without vats should determine the damage output of a headshot. A headshot is a headshot. You should see some, oh my god, i just been shot in the head. You know, I mean, enemies that have armor on their head, you know, that's the thing, like, if you see an enemy without armor on their head, that's something you should shoot for. All people are the same. Some are just tougher. And a headshot should deal some noticeable damage. Alright, number 15, weather and protection. The Fallout New Vegas DLC Honest Hearts implemented rain effect, and it was nice to see and it would also be nice to be seen in Fallout 4. For example, normal unirradiated rain that has a clear color with clouds that are normal. Then there can actually be irradiated rain that adds one rad per sec. Next to thunderstorms, with or without radiation, leaving puddles of rain that will eventually despawn. Oncoming weather hazards should be obvious to the player unless said player is venturing out of a cave and happens to be unlucky enough to be caught in the middle of an irradiated thunderstorm. An unstop oh my god, excuse me. An, unst an unstoppable occurrence that the player cannot stop may give off a more survival importance in such a harsh wasteland. Like, um, what's that one's DLC? Um, it was the first, it was the first Fallout New Vegas DLC. Oh my god. Like, I hated that DC DLC, I really did. But it, w it was like a good DLC, you know, the story was enjoyable, but I, I, I was really creeped out, and the fact that the holograms, you know, and so forth. Uh, what was that one DLC? Well, if you know what it is, I'm gonna keep thinking about it. But you, if you were to, there was like smoke clouds, and those things, you know, would cause some damage to you if you walk through them. Similar to that, like like while you're out in the rain, you know, the, but instead of just killing you and so forth. Uh, I'm just trying so hard to think of that DLC. Um. Uh, oh my God, Honest Hearts, Lonesome Road. Uh, 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 oh, I just had it. Come on. Honest Hearts, Lonesome Road. Wasn't there another one after that? There was like four DLCs. Uh, Lonesome Road. Oh, God, why can't I even remember the science-y one? Oh, come on. Uh, Old World Blues? That was a science-y one, but... Come on, come on, uh... De dead, dead, dead? Something with dead. Dead money? Dead money, I think so. Dead mo yeah, I think that's it, dead money. Well, the dead money DLC, yeah. Okay, so number 16, VAT stances. Usually if you're going to VATs, pick your target and fire the player would be just seen looking down the sights with an angry face and firing. Simple, but if you were to score a score a kill shot, the cam the kill camera would have more of a movie style view with the bullet scene shooting towards your enemy. Maybe when you're shooting, you could take a better stance with your guns, like a pistol, one handing it while you shoot three enemies in the head, scoring a triple headshot. Poses to make the player feel more badass, while he or she adds another tally to his or her wall of slaughter. So, I mean, I'm not saying, like, uh, like, you just stand there with your sniper looking like, you know, like, haha, <laughs> and just, you know, hip fire sniper and then get a headshot and just, you know, like, dance for a second until the vats wears off. I'm thinking more like an assault rifle, like, or a shotgun. Like, if they're close enough, you're like one handed and boom, and there's recoil and you're kind of flung back, but, you know, and then you, you either pump it or you, I don't know, like, other shotguns. Like, uh, like, you should just, like, be, like, okay, I, you know, I am a survivor. Feel me. 
boom, headshot, and so forth. Alright, number 17. Improved stealth features. Sneaking usually in Fallout was the player crouching down, going for the kill, or skulking around and hiding from enemies. If you were to just use a melee weapon or an enemy, they would just kind of fall down if you didn't notice. You know, if you were just knife them and you were to get a kill, they would kind of bend their knees and fall back onto you. Instead, the player should have stealth kill, animation, stealth kill animations, even out of VATS mode, even though in VATS mode the melee is still kind of the same. Similar to Skyrim, slitting their throat or stabbing them in the back and pulling them down. On arm kills by snapping their necks or choke holding them. Because, uh, well, I, you know, uh, what am I trying to say? The, the Sandman perk, which is when while an enemy was sleeping, is completely acceptable. I honestly liked that. They didn't even have that in Skyrim. All you did was knife them, and I thought it was a little weird that when you when you do that and you like uh, when you had the Sandman perk and it was like a two-person bed, you'd actually get in bed next to them and kill them. Or if you had the uh, like the the uh, appealing to the opposite gender perks, like confirmed bachelor or you know confirmed mistress or something, you could actually sleep with them and kill them or you know st stuff like that. All right, number 18. Love the radio. In fall, love the radio. In Fallout 3, I loved Three Dog. In Fallout New Vegas, I love New Vegas radio with that old man. My idea is that there can be multiple radio stations for all kinds of players to listen to, depending on their reaction. Radio broadcasts similar to introductions to DLCs and similar to Fallout New Vegas broadcasts that would introduce the to you to potential follower, like how you met Raul in Fallout 4. Fallout. <laughs> Yes, Fallout 4, well, well, that's actually kind of possible since he's, you know, he can live that long. He might even bet a kid when you meet him or something. I don't know what they're going to do. Um, where was I? <laughs> uh, okay, radio stations that can inform the player of an occurring event that may want the player to venture out and see what he or she can do there. For example, a bandit raid in Insert City here, or an Enclave scout reported around Insert Location here. Having a subtle informant in the wastelands making the game more alive, other than the broadcaster telling the other people of the waste, uh, quotation marks, you know, you can't see him. You can imagine, though, of the waste of what a protagonist has been doing recently and how, and of his or her accomplish accomplishments. Like, if Fallout 3, you know, he just did something and threw it, they'd be like, oh, 3 oh, guess what this man just did? He, he, uh, he just met his dad. No, no, no. He came all the way from the vault just to meet his dad. In Fallout New Vegas, like, a courier was reported shot in the head, and he got back up, and he got back to doing his courier thing. Now, that's what I call a good service. Okay. So, number 19. Improve Pip-Boy. I love the Pip-Boy gear the, the player wore. I love the Pip-Boy gear the player wore in Fallout 3. In Fallout New Vegas, it was a bit of a stretch that the man who saved the courier in Fallen Vegas happened to have a pit boy and gave it to a stranger that and that the stranger immediately knew how to handle one. The pit boy is an innovative or science fiction idea. Sort of like a okay, you know, it's on my arm and all my inventory it's you know, it's great. It seems like something that would actually, you know, that could actually be in the future of our time. You know, not that bulky since we seem to be shrinking everything, but you get the idea. It would be nice to see in Fallout 4, but make it more of the rusted, or it has been da upgraded or downgraded model compared to the Pip Boy 2000. Similar to the one of the uh, computer, how they have mods, they have the Pip Boy 2500, where it's like a little box sort of thing, like a little uh, like a little phone that's similar to, very similar, but it's the 2500 model, and that would make a lot of sense to me that you know that a random player, especially since we don't know what's gonna happen in the story, happen to have one, keep it in your back pocket or something boom bust it out and you know there it is right there but it seems like you could also lose it I guess but you know you get the idea alright number 20 number 20 protection if there were weather effects that had an effect on the player maybe there could be protection from these weather effects irradiation rain wearing a full body armor and a mask to protect your face there was a gas hazard a gas hazard you know dead money I feel, if I, I'm wrong about that DLC I'm just gonna sound like some some ghetto rapper if there was a gas hazard, the player could wear a mask or a rebreather to help the player walk through the hazard unscathed. Next, Piage. Oh, well, I guess I was done. Well, here's all the things that I know so far about the Fallout New Fallout 4. 
The next fallout will be located in Boston. They're already doing the research on Boston. As most game continuation should be, they'll be making improvements, of course. You know, they can't just make a game that's good. The next one's sucky. Why would they do that to us? Most likely, this will not be seen or read. Well, I've read it, but this probably won't be seen on YouTube. Two views. Probably mine. And a majority of players agree that the next Fallout has a lot to learn from Skyrim. I'd like to thank you for listening to this, if you actually did. I'm um, not sure if this will actually get any views. I actually went through all the hassle of, uh, like, typing this down, printing and making some edits, tearing up the original print, throwing it into the recycling bin, and printing another new one out, and finishing this bad boy. And after this, I'm probably going to lock this away, or tear it up again and throw it into the recycle bin, because I love the trees. Even though that's quite a waste of ink. Unless it does get views, and I could make more. I might start posting Terraria if this actually does get at least, I don't know, like 20 views? I don't I don't know. I just want to, like, you know, it's nice to have ideas. Even though they probably won't be taken into consideration. I'm not going to, like, give them, like, oh, hey, maybe the story could be like this, or and maybe you can meet the courier. Or. That's not the kind of thing I want to happen, because it's their story, it's their idea, and so far they've been doing a great job. <laughs> But these things, they're most likely going to implement mostly sprinting and weather. And maybe, uh, maybe more, uh, clever things the player could do when, when, you know, venturing out into the waste. Maybe even more emotional things, similar to, uh, similar to, uh, what's that one girl's name? Like, uh, in Fallout, in Fallout New Vegas, you could develop a relationship with your, you know, your followers, like, Boone, for example, you get to know him, and you become best buds, <laughs> yeah, well, that's what I felt like after, after getting to know him a lot better, you know, I felt like, 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 you know, like, after, uh, I reached his max, uh, quest line, that, you know, he would basically, like, you know, completely watch my back, especially when I gave him the gold, the golden, or the Govi, the golden Govi sniper, like, he's the kind, he, like, he's a sniper, so when you'd watch, like, when you hear him shooting, the heads would start popping, I'm not even exaggerating when I played with him on, on uh, Fallout New Vegas, or in, uh, uh, what's that one, in Fallout 3, the super mutant, the, the one that's, you know, seems to not snap, he, uh, you know, he seems to be like, oh, you're a good guy, I'll come with you, you know, let's be best buds forever and ever. And you know, he, he de you develop a bit of a relationship. He's a pretty cool guy. You can even involve him in the end of your game. In Fallout, in Fallout New Vegas, though, Boone, you know, he uh, tells you his life story, how he lost his wife, how he misses him, and how, uh, and you know, how he came to be in Fallout New Vegas, or no, or how he came to be where you meet him. Things similar that, that things similar like that could get the player, or the protagonist. Whoever bought Fallout to be like, okay, I can play this game again. I can, I can be a different person instead of just focusing on like two factions. In Fallout in Vegas, it was either Legion or the NCR or Mr. House or uh, Yes Man. Seems like like you have you have your own ending. Like the player himself can end his story, saying like like you can just you know like uh, you can. You can sort of like, you know, once you survive long enough, you have enough caps, you can like move into a town and you're given the option once you're like max level or, or once you've completed every quest to just stop. Just to, you know, end the courier or, and, you know, and, you know, the lone wanderer or the, the, the venturer, you know, took a seat and, rem and decided to remember every step he took once, you know, once he set out into the waste. Maybe Fallout 4 could be based on you grew up out in the waste and it's like, oh, come on, whatever your name is, let's go shoot some stuff. And, you know, shoot some stuff and so forth. Alright, I'd like to thank you for watching this. I guess subscribe, especially uh, leave some feedback or comments. Um, thank you.